Hey guys, what's up? I'm bringing you a quick video to discuss uh, an interesting topic called uh, Docker volumes. So if you have been uh, a subscriber of this channel, you might have seen me use Docker a lot to spin up databases, message queues, uh, and other uh, interesting web servers, right? Uh, like uh, proxies. I use Docker all the time. And um, if you have noticed that every time we use Docker, we ended up with ephemeral kind of data, where the moment we destroy and remove the container, our data is gone. Okay, so let's explain why is that and how we can use Docker volumes to persist uh, the data of the container in a place that we can see copy backup and we can essentially make a backup of and spin up another container and reuse that data on another container so how about we do that okay so here i'm going to use postgres as an example and i have spin up pg admin here and i don't have any postgres instances as of now so i am going to go ahead and spin up a postgres instance so let's go ahead and do that using docker okay and obviously to know that you have docker just do docker run hello world make sure that you get this hello from docker and if you do that that means you're ready to rock and roll okay and um uh, all right so i'm going to spin up a docker container with a postgres instance in it and to do that it is extremely simple you can do docker run and it's always a good idea to give your container a name. So I'm going to give it a name called PG. And we're going to give it a port because Postgres is a, is a client server application. So it's listening on some port. And I want to expose the port 5432, which is running on the container here, to 5432, which is running on my host, right? So I'm listening on 5432 on my host, okay? Assuming this is not in use. And then finally, the final thing is you specify the image from which you want to pull the Postgres. I think this is Postgres 12, which is the latest. And if you run, obviously, what will happen here is, and you specify, I didn't specify any data or anything. So by default, when you do that, Docker will pick a random directory on your host machine and use it as a volume and will store the data because Postgres will need data, guys, right? It's a folder with all your databases and, and, and indexes and post uh, stored procedures and all that jazz, right? So now I can, if you go to PG admin, I'm gonna connect server connection, let's call this Hussein Mac. And using the default thing, Postgres, Postgres, that's the default password, right? I'm going to call this PG, right? And if I connect, I am obviously going to establish the connection if I can spell my name correct here. That's the host name. That's my machine name here. And the port is 4432. That's the default port. And the database is always, you will get the database for free here, which is called Postgres. And this is it. No tables. So go ahead and if I create a table right now and called it, I don't know, employees, right? And here's, here's the thing, it's an empty, empty employee table and I can start doing stuff in this. I create tables, I create data uh, and that's it. However, if I go back to my container and I stop it, right? If I stop my container and try to connect, what will happen? disconnect server and let's just go ahead and try to connect the server again right i'm gonna get an error right because the server is no longer no longer running that's not a problem because my container still it, it's paused it's stopped it's not deleted right so i can do, always do docker start pg okay and that will start my container up again so i can connect again and you can see that i still have my table here so if I stop my container or my container crash, the data doesn't go away because the container is still there, correct? And it's referencing some folder that I have no idea about, okay? That's the problem. So if I do docker stop pg and I then do, and I then do docker 
rmpg, which means remove the container. And then I do the same command to run the container again. This will be a brand new container. That means it will be a brand new folder with, with the data that it dumps in. That means I just lost all my data. Let's confirm that. So I'll spin up the database instance again, go back. And if I do right to click, disconnect, right? And then right to click, connect again, put the password, right? If I go back, there are no tables because employees is done. There's no data. This is a brand new instance for the first time it's running. How do I start up a container with Postgres, have a bunch of data and, and start adding a lot of data, maybe pour in million rows? How do we do that? It is extremely shampoo, right? So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do docker stop pg, docker rmpg, okay? Right? And here's the thing. Before we start the container here, I want to specify a folder. And in this case, this is my folder, Hus user, Hussein data. And I'm going to create a, a folder here called PG. It's blank, right? But here's a trick. What I want to do is I do Docker run, if I can find the command, Docker run, name, PG, port. And here's the thing, before we end that, I want to do dash V. I want to use the volume. And the volume on my host is users, Hussein Nasser, data, PG, mapping to the volume or the data path of Postgres in the running container, which is almost fixed all the time. So it is var lib Postgres SQL and then slash data. So that path is always going to be the same path on the container because it's the container is built up from I'm an image. Unless the image changes that path, then we don't have to worry about it, right? That's why it's always a good idea to fix an image, right? You can always put like spaces here. And then that maps to this folder. So guess what? Now, when I spin up the container, it's going to start dumping all its data into my path that I specifically asked it to dump its data in. That means I have full control on this folder. I can back it up. Obviously, not while the Postgres is running, right? You can stop the container, back up, gzip it, right? And then maybe just destroy the container or run your test against this data, uh, Postgres instance. And then once you're done, extract a brand new folder and then point it again. Let's, let's do this. Let's show you how to do that, okay? So what I'm gonna do here essentially is I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect. Obviously, this is going to be an empty, right? This is going to be a brand empty database. And I'm going to go ahead and create another table here. Some table, I don't know. Uh, URLs. Okay, so you, we're building a URL short now, for example. And then let's build another table. You, you start doing your data. You start doing your stuff, right? Just doing your stuff. And here's the beautiful part. If I go to Finder, the path itself, and going to the path, look at that. PG, this is the data. That it just was populated with data that I have didn't didn't do anything with, right? I just pointed the Docker container to this folder and it's just filling stuff. And here's the critical thing. Now I have some data here, I have some tables. So what I would, what I can do is I can just decide to stop the container, okay? I can make a backup of this guy, right? I can do tar dash, uh, how do you do that? SC, Z, compress with gzip and the file is, uh, let's call it pg.tar.gz and I want to compress this folder, okay? And then just like that, I have now a compressed folder of this thing. So, so as you can see, now I have a backup of my data and I can, I can just decide to copy the entire directory into a completely different directory. I can take this up file, take it into an entire other machine, extract it there and spin up the container with that data. So let's, how about we do that, right? So let's just copy this folder, PG, as R means everything, including the content from PG to, I don't know, from this folder to PG brand new, okay? And just like that, I have PG brand new, 
right, with a bunch of data here. So now, if I spin up a completely different container in a completely different port, let's do that. How about that? Docker run, uh, give it a name, PG brand new, right? Just the name. And then the port will be just for fun. I'm going to use one, two, three, four. Okay. And let's just do it this way. And then mapping to port 5432. And then the volume is what? Users, Hussein Nasser, data, not PG, just to be fancy, right? I don't want the data to be PG brand new, just because, right? And then this maps to var lib postgres sql and then data and then finally i want to spin up a postgres database from the image right let's check this out and this will spin up the postgres instance on a brand new port remember this port now is one two three four my container technically is stopped right or maybe you can go ahead and remove it and that's even fine if i go back to my PG admin, I have to establish a new connection. This is no longer working, obviously. But if I establish a new server, let's call this PG brand new. I should expect my employees and URLs table. So the port is one, two, three, four, right? And then same thing, Postgres and Postgres and then save. And then just like that, go there and look at that. My beautiful two tables just because i have the folder and i have zipped it you can take that zip file you can take that tar into a completely different machine completely different host with uh, the um with docker there and essentially extract the host there and you can automate that process right and extract the folder there and spin up another container, point the volume to that folder and that's it just like that you have the data on another machine, right? But that's it. essentially, it's not really replication, it's just copying the data. So the use case of this is you want to essentially build the test data. Like I have a huge set of test data and I want to run my test against it, but the, the moment I run my test, the data will be corrupted, that, that's it. The data will be ruined. So what do I do? I wanna make a backup of the database. Well, you can do a PG clone, which is very complicated, but the easiest way is to use Docker and have a zip file, right? Extract it, spin up a container, have your application connect to the container, right? The application that runs the test, connect to the container, run your test, and once you're done, destroy the container, destroy the volume because you don't need it. You have a backup, right? And when you want to run another test again on your new version of the application, extract it again, spin up a brand new container, and that's it, you always have a fresh copy of your data. And that's just one use case of where you can use volumes. Volumes are powerful stuff, right? And uh, yeah, especially with Kubernetes, the volumes is always being used behind the scenes, always, especially because containers are stateful by design. So if they are they are continuously being destroyed from one pod and spin up in another pod, which is could be completely different host, right? So yeah, that was like a quick video, guys, showing you how to use Docker volumes on Docker. Hope you enjoyed that. See you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.